Right, okay, welcome back to the channel. We are out at Hollywell Golf Club, and obviously alongside me, I have Lewis Johnson, who is bringing a bag full of forgiveness. He promises that this is the most forgiving set of golf clubs in 2023. Right, time to start things off, Lou. I think let's start off at the top end of the bag. I can already see what he's bringing in here. Start off with a big dog. The most forgiving driver in the pro's opinion is... Ping G430 Max. Yeah, no brainer. Yeah. As I like to say. What's so good about it, mate? What, what have you found in terms of your custom fits and anything else? Yeah, you're, you're not... G430 as a whole, I think is great. Yeah. It's just an extension of that. G45. I like the Max more um, because you're not fixed to that SFT. You know, yeah. Some people think that's more forgiving. Uh, I like the, the adjustability. And it's just really good, isn't it? It yeah. just sounds good. It looks good. Yeah. Um, it's easy to hit straight. Super high launching. Have you found that one? Yeah, yeah. I think one thing that Ping have always been good at is getting the ball in the air, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. But now you can do that without um, upping their spin. Yeah, yeah. Which is the key, is the initial launch angle is up, but their spin rate... Um, you, always used to, you always felt as though you were sacrificing something. Yeah, you don't agree. ping, so they need a ping, so we'll sacrifice optimal performance yeah. for the most forgiving, whereas I don't feel as though you do that this yeah, year. Yeah, 100% so agree with that. Big, big Great improvement. shaft options as well, that standard old yeah. TB range has been really yeah, good. And their, their range of um, sort of uh, you know, additional, you're not just, you know, there's, there's, a, there's, a few, there's a few more in there now, which I think is a good option for ping. And uh, there's a lot of good drivers at the market, but definitely this one for me. Most forgiving. Great, yeah. I love it as a choice. Let's hit a couple here off the tee and yeah. see how we get on, see if we can prove any of that. But a great start, I, I would 100% agree with you. believe is how solid you hit that that's a super ball wow that's long loop yeah i like it that's all right isn't it yeah 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 it's done well the interesting thing is it's no no sign of any high spin either that thing is just chased again right next <laughs> step up in the bag is we took a seat on a bench because he's about to get an old man's club out of the back and I, i'm a big advocate of the old man's club but tell me yeah. why and um, what is the so this is callaway paradigm heavenwood yeah love it um fairway woods difficult difficult clubs to hit yeah you know off the tee off the fairway so i thought well this has got a lot of loft. Yep. It's got the length of shaft. Yeah. That's gonna, so yeah, it kind of ticks all boxes because I, I can't just say, well, this is my favorite three wood because I advise a lot of people now to avoid three wood. Hmm. They haven't got enough speed to get the launch or, yeah. you know, we go three wood with five wood shaft or we go, you know, five wood lofted down or whatever. But this just does everything, yeah. um, doesn't it? So it's got a longer shaft than a normal seven wood. It's got. I think just um, just one second there, because a lot of people ask this when we reviewed the heaven wood. They've said, "What is it exactly?" So basically, it's got a bigger head than a seven wood. It's often got a bigger head than the five wood. I'm not too sure in this lineup in terms of paradigm, but it's a bigger head than you would normally get, and it's got a longer shaft. Often again, similar length of shaft to your five wood. Yeah. So carry on. Sorry, mate. It's not. It's not adjustable. Yeah. Yo, know, I do like fairway woods with a bit of adjustability. But if I had to put one in the bag for most people, yeah. Uh, it's 20 degrees. Get it in the air. Yeah. Dead easy to hit. You know, you're not going to sacrifice a huge amount of distance because yeah. you know it's got a long shaft. Nice. Um, so yeah, and, and it looks good. I, I don't mind. I, I don't mind how it looks. It's yeah. not. Um, you know, I like that you can see the lines on the face. There yeah. is a paradigm video, isn't there? We, yeah. we, we've done a lot of the address. And I think it's, it's a good option. It's a good Absolutely. option. Super forgiving. So we're going we're gonna to hit a couple of shots off the tee box behind us. And again, something where it gets a little bit narrower and a little bit tighter in, in terms of down that sort of 200 yard mark. So a perfect club for that. But you're playing this thing into par threes, long par threes, second shots on par fives, long par fours. So again, got plenty of versatility in, 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 a, in the heavenwood, the sevenwood range. So yeah, love it. Let's, Let's go and hit a few over there. Oh, superb, super strike. Sounded really good, ball yeah. flight ridiculous. Still goes yeah. all right though, doesn't it? That's fantastic, mate, really good. Yeah, everything it says, or everything as you've just explained. The problem is that was you doing it. Can, can an average golfer do it? And to be fair, this has been something I've been, I've been loving. So if I can't, I'll be really disappointed. Do 
what's interesting, that's a poor old strike in terms of out the bottom grooves. It's probably done what Lou would suggest and what I found on the fairways is it was a poor, poor strike and like I said, very much out the bottom and still has enough forgiveness to get me not too dissimilar to where Lou ended up but with a totally different ball flight, a lot flatter. So that's the kind of thing that I love about these is just how forgiving they are when you don't get it quite right. Yeah, I think this would be probably the most important part of the bag. For, yeah, for, for got a sneak peek there. Yeah, yeah, for, for your average player. Yeah. It's the club that would come first after the after the, the longest iron and the longest iron would you you know with the hd irons yeah where would you go to for an average golfer is that it's not for everybody to i mean I've, I've got five iron in here we've yeah. got a little five iron we'll probably hit a few won't we but um i would go to five iron then because they are easier you know i wouldn't go for, to five iron for everyone no it'll be on how they swing at the speed, the swing speed and stuff. okay um but i've got the five iron in here and I think I really wanted to sort of stress this, it's a question I get asked a lot, is it's the G430 5 hybrid. Okay. 5 hybrid, 5 iron. It's almost a necessity now to have that, you know, if you have a 6 iron, you can have a 6 hybrid. Yeah. And because the, the ball speed that comes off this type of club yeah. is going to be a lot greater than yeah. the ball speed that comes off the iron. So just because that says 5 and that says 5, just because that's, you know, I imagine that's about 26 degrees aloft on. This has got definitely got 26 on it. It's just something that I can't stress enough. The timing, not... the timing of that response is incredible because last night we had a comment on a video where I compared uh, an iron and a hybrid from a PXG range and someone suggested, why am I not comparing five to five? and six to six and it's because they do different yeah. things completely yeah. so that i hope that viewer is still here watching tonight's video and there's the answer but yeah and, I, and i've not done this um I, I, it just needs to be massively emphasized it's a it's a hugely important part of the bag what's the next club and i always say if you've got a if your four iron is your longest club you, your four hybrid would be a really good step up in yeah. terms of the ball's going to come off quicker it's definitely going to go further um, anything in particular about the g430 lineup in terms of the hybrids that you particularly why, why this one or yeah i just think it, it, compared to everything else on the market i think they do it well they do it well yeah. they do it well um there's no um options it's just we make a really good club yeah you know um I've got to, uh, the, 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 the sort of draw by stuff in it it's just we make really good hybrids. yeah we'll let a few we'll let a few here we're sort of one what is it 165 into the breeze and yeah. a typical example of where this is a really good club i mean so far what I, I really you know if you've watched my previous reviews you'll know we're very much in agreement here this thing pops the ball up super high the ball speeds are still quick and on top of that i think it looks superb as well which has got now to do with performance but looks really yeah. good is that yours or mine yeah. right let's give it a whack yeah, super strike. I mean, that kind of ball fight is so useful to, well, to pretty much any golfer, to be honest with you. But, yeah. you know, it's it's high launching. It's coming down at a great descent angle. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, can't knock this club on. One thing you notice more so in this weather is I, I love the Matt Crown. Ah! That's it. I mean, the thing is for me, it's just a towering ball flight. And I mean, there's no doubt this club is more useful to me than it is for you. And it's notable, noticeably different ball flight. Lewis is a bit more penetrating, but it's that ability to get that ball up in the air, which is yeah. such a big help. I, what I like about this club is all the other, you know, we're talking about the most forgiving and what I would, this is a club that all the others come, maybe come with a little caveat of, but it looks like this. But yeah, yeah. Great is, this is a club that, it doesn't have any of that. It looks good, yeah. performs brilliant. You, you know, it, it, so every, every, him, everyone could benefit from one of these. You a better player's yeah. bag still, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, 100% got my seal of approval, that one, mate. And uh, so now it's getting a little bit more difficult. We've done the irons, we've done the hybrid, we're getting a little bit longer in the length of shaft. So I'm looking over to the bag to see what's next. Right, so next up, Lou, is irons. And uh, well, I can certainly see what you've got in your hand. Maybe you want to reveal what you consider yeah. to be. Go on. Stealth HD. Right. I think, um, you know, this in addition to the to the Stealth range, which was a good club. Um, I don't, I think this is probably one of the most underrated clubs out there at the moment. Yeah, yeah, really. Um, People don't give it enough credit for, and uh, you know, from performance in fittings, and certainly what we're seeing is, um, this is this would be my go-to. Yeah. yeah. 
Fair enough. I mean, I, I can't argue with that, to be honest with you. It's something that we've been, every time we've tried it, I know you had a go at it out here on the course, at yeah. it yourself, and uh, really, really forgiving. Maybe we'll just pop, what's that 7 iron we've got? Yeah. So we'll go 7 iron, we'll go and find uh, 150, 160 down uh, the fairway there, hit a few balls in, and get some reaction on uh, the Stealth HDs. You should put them in the bag, you know. It did get the distance as well, yeah, didn't well it? Well played. Backhand. Yeah. Nice, beautiful strike that, wasn't it? You know what's interesting? You know what's interesting is I don't think I pressed record for the shot tracer. Yeah. However, yeah. what is also interesting is the fact that um, they sounded really good. It sounded yeah. like a really crisp strike. Solid, yeah, yeah. Wasn't it? I think that was one of my first things when we tried them that they didn't sound like they look. Yeah, absolutely. No, I totally agree. I'm a little bit concerned. Why? Played terrible yesterday. Didn't I, Anne? Fine. You're definitely not gonna hit that to the right, are you? Because of the way, I mean, oh. the way it's offset and you stuff. You put me off then. <laughs> Wonder if I thought my alignment was all out. <laughs> Here you go. Perfect. It's just great, the ball flight, isn't it? Yeah. It doesn't move anywhere. It feels as though you've got the forgiveness of it not going and the offset for it not to go to the right, mm. but it doesn't have as much left curvature as no. you, you'd think it would. Not at all. Which is, which is a good thing, because I think what, I thought initially when I hit that harder, it would just go whoosh, straight off to the left. But it, it, just, it doesn't hold does it. a line, yeah, yeah no, no great spin either way. But the interesting thing for me, again, don't forget, in terms of forgiveness, I'm not too sure you're sounding pretty much out the middle. I think mine was, to be fair. But the idea of this is that, um, you know, you get these a little bit of heel or a bit of toe, and they're not doing a great deal different than out in the middle, to be honest with you. Yeah. Certainly in terms of popping the ball up as well, which is, don't forget, a lot of golfers are going to struggle with. So I like your choice, mate. Yeah. Good, good choice. So irons are the Stealth HD in terms of the most forgiving in a 2023 setup. Little chip shot situation, kind of place where again, I'm not saying forgiveness is a major key, but maybe yeah. a club that's going to help out the kind of uh, yeah. higher handicap golfer. What are, you, uh, what are you suggesting? What are we looking at? So we've got a couple of clubs for around the green. Yeah. The one, the one that I'm going to go for is um, Cleveland CBX. Okay. CBX2, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so you've got the full face on there. Yeah. You know, and, and we should probably stress, it's not the clubs that I love the most, it's the clubs that I think are the most forgiving. Yeah, yeah. That will help yeah. the average golfer out the Absolutely. most. Absolutely. Um, and it, and it, it does exactly what you want it to do. You know, um, I think that wide sole's a big help as well. I know that I've yeah. found it whenever I've tried it, that helps me a bit, I don't stub as much in it maybe. And I think they've done a lot better with the design on this one, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah um, Good club, good yeah. club. In this instance, when we've got to go a little bit uphill, ideally we need a little bit of help getting it in the air. Yeah. Um, this would be this would be what I'd go for. Go on then, let's see. Execute the shot and let's see what it does. You say there's two clubs are you suggesting for around here? Yeah, so we, you know, a different, we'll, we'll have a little bit of a look. I put two in. Okay. Two, two sort of around the green clubs because okay. I know, you know, people there, uh, it's a massive part of the bag where people need forgiveness but will also lower their scores. So yeah. we'll okay. have a look at another one as well. It's just interesting, that's a great shot by the way. I always think that again, even with yourself there, just that bit of turf interaction on the, um, on the sole there. Yeah. It definitely just helps a little bit. And definitely, again, yeah, it plays more like a normal wedge. Yeah. Um, you know, for anyone who doesn't really want to sacrifice there and go to something completely obscure, um, but it's super, super easy to hit. You know, you don't get any other sort of traditional blade style yeah. uh, wedges that perform like that and feel like this. You know, it does give you the maximum amount of help. Good. Uh, makes it really easy. So I like the fact that, you, you know, they, they put, they've made a sort of wedge specific shaft as well. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. right. So good. Well, it's interesting. I've got, uh, I mean, again, can't argue with that. Really, I've always found the CBX wedge lineup from Cleveland to be, like I said, super forgiving. So interesting to say, though, you, you, you said you've got another option. Yeah. Do you want to go into that now or? No, we'll, we'll, we'll pick another spot because I think um, it will, this, that was perfect for that scenario. I think, you know, obviously there's always different, you know, there's never the same chip shot. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll pick another part really where um, I think you'd be. Your next club's going to yeah, come into play. I think you'll like this one. I'm interested. 
I just what I like about this thing. I don't know. I don't, I don't know why I don't put it back in the bag. <laughs> That's the first thing. So you're better off hitting that. I, I, I mean, I could stand there and pretend to love it, but I mean, I, I love it for everyone else. I can hit it. There's nowhere. I, I'm stood here going. There's nowhere to land that. As Have a you got that on? And. Like, well, we better introduce it, it then. She snuck a camera on us there. So let's, the, the, we've come to the other situation, which unfortunately I've pinched the club off Lewis and, <laughs> and done my own demo because I love this thing. Tell them what it is. It's a ping chipper. <laughs> he says that with so much reluctance. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you've chose know. this as yeah, your yeah. most forgiving. Yeah, but like you say, when, you, when you're like, you know, let's put a bag together um, that we think, you know, everyone can use, everyone will love, and it, you know, it's based on interactions that i have in store yeah, fitting yeah. and helping people's game you know through lessons and stuff is this is probably the club that's had the most influence on people's games yeah. and crazy, i'm not going to deny it you know and like we were just saying in this is a really difficult chip i would struggle at, you know i wouldn't mind getting a lobbage out and flying it close to the hole and trying to spin it a bit yeah yeah and people are just laughing at probably just laughing laugh at no over. chance yeah. yeah so you can land this short and it'll run up. Mm. You can carry it on. A little bit more, yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it's, it's just got everything. And the people that have had this, they don't worry about strike anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone gets to these situations and they're panicking about um, how hard to it. But, but ultimately, they, they just they don't want to thin it through the green, they don't yeah. want to fluff it in front of them, and they never seem to do it with this club. Yeah. So I had to put it in. No brainer. No, yeah. I, again, once again, well, like I said, I pinched the club off him. I, I know for a fact that the first one came a little bit short, you learnt a little bit from that, fair enough, and got a little bit closer. But I always compare it to like, well, okay, so if I've got if I've got a 52 wedge in my hand here, yeah. am I going to get any closer? Well, that's what that's, you know, the CBX2, from yeah. the scenario is, um, that was the perfect club for that scenario. Yeah. You know, it was one option, it was up, it yeah. it. This one... Nothing um, in front of you, as, yeah. in, as in free run. Exactly, yeah. 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 Um, I think there was a, only a fuel chips over nothing, is uh, is what I... I like that saying, so, there so you yeah, go. There's nothing there, but it's a little bit undulating, so let's, let's put we'll it in. just leave it there, we let's should just end the back. video there. <laughs> only a fuel chips over nothing. Classic from Lou. Right, we're now down to what? I think it's down to the putter, isn't it? Yeah, switch up into that. I love the fact you've put a pink chipper and you're most forgiving. Right, Lou, this is a, uh, we're down to the putter and I've seen this thing before. And again, I'm liking where you're going with all this, but explain to our audience what you've got under there. It's the even roll zero. Yeah. So. It's a spaceship, basically. Yeah, it's a big old rascal, isn't it? It is, yeah. So, I like the fact that it's massive and it's yeah. really easy to hit. It's really easy to line up. Yeah. Um, it's got a big old grip on it. Yeah. There's loads of weight. Um, I think he's got, in terms of, his, um, I don't remember this as a stat, so don't quote me, but in terms of his MOI rating, which is ultimately what forgiveness is measured by, yeah. it's off the charts. You know, it's got so many different alignment um, aids in terms of the ball, the line, yeah. the line goes right to the face. Um, the grip, the little bit of shaft lean, it just does perimeter, everything. The perimeter weighting is huge with it. I mean, we, we've done this before where, I mean, obviously, the suggestion is you put in, when, when you put a style varies, then you maybe suit a certain style of putter. Yeah. But I really, again, have been a real sort of agreeance that this perimeter weighting, that is extreme to say the least, has got to be, provide the most stable type of uh, putter it's just yeah. logical, surely, to yeah. Christ. And, and, and you'd be amazed at how many people I see, they, they don't hit it out of the middle of the putter. No, no. People think that you can't miss it. Trust me, everybody does, including yeah. me. And the more help we can get, you know, there's certainly your know, proximity to the hole or accuracy matters way more here than it does off the tee. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is why I've gone for this. You know, it's something... You know, a bit out there. It's, you know, it is a bit out there. But, but no, I, I agree. And again, with all these things that we've uh, Lewis has been through, don't I think? And I'm speaking on your behalf here a little bit. But you've got like there are obviously options, but it's a theme where you think about well, okay, this is ultra stable. There are other tailor-made putters. There are Callaway putters that you know offer Absolutely. that sort of similar concept instability. Yeah. But um, I like this. I like the way this, it's set this up. This is like if you had a tick box for every everything in terms of forgiveness, alignment. MOI everything. Yeah. This just takes everything to the I extreme, agree. and this is. Let's bad. roll a couple in. Yeah, greens are looking well at Hollywell, mate. <laughs> aren't they? Greener, greener, aren't They're they? Looking good. Yeah, looking good. Go on. 
it's a type of putter as well that kind of you know you soon I, you build confidence with it quite quickly yeah well i think you do anyway you know it's not it's not if i've got a it's going down the other extreme if i've got a blade in my hand if i've got a lovely looking scotty cameron blade i'm sort of flailing in the wind with it do you know what i mean i'm struggling to get it square it, I'm messing you haven't around. got to try to do anything i'm doing that, nothing i yeah. stick i stick it down and i haven't got much option but just to let the thing swing really It'd be great really if it good. dropped in that was a great line as well just needed this and a bit better but again great choice the whole concept really is all about stability forgiveness and that is a forgiving putter we've got nowhere else to go that's the end of today's video and uh, massive thanks Lou I appreciate your time and don't forget this is all based on sort of the experience that Lou is getting in terms of customer interaction customer fits and customer feedback so I really like that we've seen I like the fact that it's agreed with a lot of what we've sort of found in our testing this year as well a um, lot of other options out there but them lot are probably worth considering if you're going to swap anything out in 2023 right thanks to Lou thanks to Hollywell Golf Club thanks to you lot for watching and uh, I'll probably see you all tomorrow night